existing licenses in Kenya. Uh, Kenya government wants, uh, I think, 25% back of the existing license and to, to give up new options to new companies. How do you see about your license in that topic? Yeah, uh, again, that's a topic I've, that's very near and dear to my heart. I've, I've talked with the current vice president of the country, the minister of economy, the minister of energy and mines, the permanent secretary of energy. Uh, all of them would say the same thing. We are not going to change existing PSAs. So new guys that come in, now that we've de now that we've de-risked the play and we've you know, proven that Kenya's an oil country, uh, new guys that come in are going to have to pay much tougher terms. There's now going to be a signature bonus. There's going to be a 25% carried government interest, and the production splits, or the profit splits, and the cost recovery levels are all going to be adjusted down. They're going to go to competitive bid rounds. Um, so uh, I think you'll see anybody that comes in later is going to have a much tougher contract. But you know, what I try to impress to the government is if we change our terms, if we come in and say impose that 25% uh, government interest or we change our royalties or any of those things, um, if you're trying to attract in a, a big major to come do a $5 billion development either onshore or offshore, um, they're, going to be, they're going to be very hesitant to do so if they don't see that there's contracts to build it. So the pitch I make to them is whatever you might be, whatever small amount you might be able to exact from us, you're going to lose tenfold by not being able to bring in uh, bigger uh, bigger companies to do the development. So far, they, they, they understand that and they agree to that. Yeah, but even Talo uh, has to put back 25% of one of those, wasn't that? No, I mean, I think what you're saying is that there in the in the contract that we signed originally, there is a government back end, right? That's always been there. But now with the, 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 the government back end, right, has always been uh, um, when we find something, the government has the right to back in for a percentage interest. So those, those that's nothing new. That was six, seven years ago when we signed the contract, all of that was the same. They haven't changed any of those things. What we find around the world is almost most PSAs have a back in right. And governments almost never back in, even though they should. You know, the, the problem with back end rights is they have to start writing checks. And governments are not very good about writing checks. So every company, every country I've ever worked in that has a back end right, people haven't exercised it. So they haven't changed the terms on us. Every, everything is the same as it was the day we signed the PSA. Furthermore, uh, you talked about Horn and the de development of Horn. Uh, in, 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 the, in the team of, of Lundin, you have Gary Goodry. Have what? Gary Goodry. Gary Goodry, yeah. Yes. And he is uh, uh, head of uh, Griffiths yeah. in Chad. They did a quite good uh, hit there. Is that possible to, to farm in uh, uh, Griffiths? Well, I don't like to give away our corporate strategy. I mean, we have looked at Chad, we've looked at everything in East Africa. I, I agree that uh, Griffiths is a, is a, is a great uh, project. I think he's got production and good exploration potential. So one of the questions is, does he really need us? Um, he's raised quite a bit of money on his own. And, um, I actually had dinner with Gary last week, uh, and uh, you know, we talked about how we might cooperate together. But uh, uh, he's in the middle of kind of, uh, he's doing an IPO right now. Um, you know, they've had some problems uh, with the former founder of yeah, Griffiths, yeah. and I think that's behind them now, so I think they, they have an obligation to go through an IPO, but certainly that would be one thing that we would look at going forward, but I, I think the timing right now is probably not right for either one of us. That's an interesting question, and uh, um, uh, one of our shareholders, probably the keenest shareholder I've got, whenever I put out a press release, it's usually about 30 seconds later, I get my first note from, from this guy. Um, I think he just sits and refreshes the screen on after coil press release. <laughs> uh, but uh, he actually pulled 10 of our analysts and said, what do you think the effect of Sabisa will be on a positive and a negative? And uh, uh, they were all over the map. but. Uh, the, the average was they thought Sabisa successful well would be a 45% increase in our share price, but Sabisa dry hole would be a 25% decrease in our share price. So I think both of those are probably 
not the right answer. I think a 25% decrease is probably much too dramatic um, um, in our share price because our share price really now is justified by a low PR alone. So to take 25% off the share price, I think it's probably too dramatic, but it wouldn't be surprising given what the market's been doing. And I think the 45% is probably too low. I mean, uh, I think, uh, as I said, uh, I think that doubles the value of our company. But again, I don't think the market's going to give us that much credit straight off the bat. So to answer your question, I think it's going to have a dramatic effect, positive or negative, depending on what the result is. Uh, so I, I think the best thing for me to do is make sure it's positive. <laughs> uh, I have one question regarding uh, your question on the background, whether the Chinese sell or the Mexican sell or the Well, I don't, I don't think it really will affect us. Uh, you know, uh, as I said, they haven't made it a, co a, a campaign topic, oil. I think the permanent secretary will be staying in place, who's the, who's the main guy we deal with. I think the negative of having a Hulu Pinano is that he's under indictment by the ICC for crimes against humanity associated with the last election. So uh, if, if he wins and if uh, that uh, indictment turns into a, uh, a trial and even worst case a conviction, it's going to be very difficult. And his vice president uh, is also uh, under indictment as well. So I think from a pure, you know, I'm not, not taking sides, but just saying, uh, it would be easier for everyone uh, uh, involved uh, if uh, Odinka would win, then we wouldn't have the ICC issue. But I think uh, as far as you know, ability to run the country and the ability to work with either group, I don't think it really matters that much to us. Uh, the new area in Ethiopia, the rift the basin area, do you, uh, you have any idea much how much oil is there? No, not really. I mean, it, it's, we don't have seismic, we don't have any drilling, so it is very frontier. It's a big basin, so I mean, uh, again, uh, it, it could be the size of, of any of our other basins. It's actually about the size of the Turkana Basin in the area. But until we shoot FTG and we shoot some seismic, we don't really know how many sweet spots are and what the basin looks like. So uh, the answer is really, uh, uh, you know, no, and, uh, and I think that if we gave it to our reserve auditor, he wouldn't And another question it's, uh, about your block uh, 10 BA. It's more or less unlisted 10 billion of. Uh, yes. Yeah. So this question is about block 10 BA. Yes. And uh, it's unrest, unrest, unrisked gross net best estimated more or less 10 billion uh, oil. And uh, you have you are not planning to do any uh, drilling in this block this year or in the future. So the question is about uh, what plans we have for block yes, 10 BA. Uh, 10 BA is our biggest resource. It's 10 billion barrels of our 28. Um, you know we, we do think it's probably one of our best blocks. Um, and the question was why why haven't we drilled there yet? Um, I, I think it's it's threefold the answer. One, that block has more time on it. We don't actually have a drilling obligation in the first. Phase, so we've got an extra year and a half on that one that we have in our other blocks. Two, it's mostly offshore. Um, so most of the prospects are actually out in the lake. Uh, we're just now getting to shoot seismic offshore. It's taken us about uh, a year to get up and running with our offshore crew. So we need to shoot the seismic in the offshore. Um, but we will not be drilling offshore. Uh, there's no plan in the short term to drill an offshore well. Um, I think uh, we can teach about a half of the prospects from the shore drilling under the lake, uh, but we, we're not really keen to go offshore and do an offshore drilling campaign just yet. We want to make sure that everything is ironclad on, on environmental issues there and that uh, there's no chance of a spill if we close it off there. You know, it's a very sensitive environment and I think we get plenty of onshore ones to, to, to go for. And, and I think uh, third, it's just the, uh, uh, the, the main main prospects are on the western coastline and there's no real access to those. So I think we think Sabisa well can approve up the source rock on that and that if it, is, if it does happen, we can basically bring the rig up there and look at some of those ones on the west coast. But uh, uh, we don't really see, a, we, we think we've got time on that one and uh, I think uh, if we need to, we can, uh, um, we can catch up on that one later. We, 
thinks of these as really testing the play concept for Northern NBA and South Omo uh, <coughs> Turkana Basin. So I think we take one last question and then there will be sandwiches outside here. So that's the last question. Yeah, the infrastructure, uh, lab set. It's a trustworthy project. So it's a question about uh, infrastructure and the lab set project, whether it's trustworthy or not. Yeah, lab set pipeline has been uh, kicking around for a long time. Um, the whole lab set project is uh, it's a $27 billion project that includes highways, rail, um, pipelines and even a refinery. So I think it's a very ambitious project and I think it would be a great project. Uh, uh, it's, it's cooperating between Ethiopia, Southern Sudan, uh, and Kenya uh, primarily. Um, the real question is can they come up with the $27 billion? So there's a number of, you know, the IMF, the World Bank, and uh, even some of the Far East countries are, have been um, discussing financing, but I don't think their financing is, is in place. And I think the, the, the pipeline, which is probably our biggest uh, um, interest in that, um, that pipeline actually runs right across the Tweega Discovery, the flying route of the last that pipeline. So we'd be more than happy for them to build that pipeline, but um, I'm a little worried that it won't go ahead because of, uh, um, it may not make economic sense. You know, South Sudan has a perfectly good pipeline going north, and I think, uh, you know, the, the, even the, the world powers are encouraging them to try to engage the north and the south to, to use that pipeline rather than building a, a $4.4 billion pipeline that they may not have enough oil to fill up. So uh, I would say that we would be happy to see the lap set go forward. We're happy to see Uganda go forward and possibly join us in the pipeline. But, um, you know, I think for our, from our standpoint, the best thing we can do is, is, is worry about our own pipeline. Uh, if we build a pipeline from Kenya to the coast, it will be much easier for Uganda to join our, our pipeline effort. It will be much easier for South Sudan to join our pipeline effort. And we would certainly welcome them to do so. But I, I would say we're not going to wait for them to, uh, to, to bring our oil to market. Thanks so much, Aro, for having come here. And we'll be back again in three months. So we'll see you soon. Thank you.